Steve talking about the Enron debacle and the one and only Paul Harvey. News and comment. Good day. At 8.30, Wilson Coleman in the morning, your information epicenter, weekdays 5 until 9 here on News Radio, WTAM 1100. Now, you mentioned, uh, uh, and I remember this from the last time we spoke, that it, when, you, when you mentioned small children, mm -hmm. sometimes what we think of as their imaginary friend mm -mm. could actually be a spirit that uh, when they grow up, the spirit, if it had passed when it was 5, wants to play with other 5-year-olds, so when... Well, little Susie becomes eight, it doesn't want to play with them anymore. No, and it'll leave and go to another house that has a child closer to their own age. Oh, it won't necessarily stay in, a, in, in the home that it... No, they get too bored when the living child gets older. Because, see, when you die and you don't cross over, you stay identically the same age. So if a child died in 1945 and they were six years old and I run across them today, they are still six years old. So they're going to go to houses where there are children like three, four, five years old so that they can play with. But when that child, the live child, gets to be seven or eight or ten, that's no fun anymore. So they'll just go to another house where there's a child closer to their age. Now, it's funny. I, my home, you, you mentioned I had three ghosts, and it seemed like I had one on every floor. My dog has separation anxiety. My, okay. my dog goes nuts if it's not with you all the time, except for if I go in the basement. That dog will not come. And the last time I did, it ran around and dropped anchor. Oh. And, and, and the dog does not, does not uh, uh, drop off a couple kids at the pool in the house. So uh -huh. I knew the dog was upset. And it will still not get on the basement. And as you inform me, I still have a, a spirit. You still have somebody down your basement. You're absolutely right. And that, and now, folks had said, I remember reading something years ago. They said, if you look between a dog's eyes, you can see a spirit. Any truth to that? I've never heard that. Really? So you learn something new every day. And I've, I've never heard. And I've, I've never, would I, would I necessarily see this? I've never seen this ghost in my basement, or is it just when, it, when you get that creepy feeling, that's what it's doing is drawing energy off of you because it's yes. creeping you out. It could give, it could, that sense of uh, being watched and you don't see anybody. Or if you're down in the, in the basement, maybe throwing a load of clothes in the washer, all of a sudden you turn and you look over your shoulder, it's like, what, what's over there? You know, you just get that sense that somebody is staring at you. You know, it's like if you're taking a shower. Nobody else is in the house. You're in the shower, and you're singing, you're humming, you're doing whatever you do in the shower. You go to reach for the shampoo, and all of a sudden, you hear that creak, that's a, a footstep, or was it the doorbell, or somebody knocking at the door? And you stand there, you're frozen. You actually hold your breath, waiting to hear what the next sound is. And in all honesty, how many people turn the water off, wrap a towel around yourself, and go look and see who's out there. Nobody. You just pull the shower curtain a little tighter and keep doing whatever you were doing. Well, a lot of times there's actually somebody walking around in the house. But you blow it off. You know, we're logical human beings. We try to come up with a logical answer for everything. Unfortunately, this is not put into a little slot somewhere that's logical. All right, I'm joined this evening by Marianne, the paranormal investigator, and let's take some phone calls here. Do we need a break right now, Rob, or can I push it off a little bit? Okay, let's push it off, because uh, all the lines are lit. Like I say, I suggest to you that if you want to get through, wait until I hang up on someone, and then you'll have your chance. Otherwise, because it's, it's always packed when you're on Marianne. Cause okay. I, I think that there's a lot of folks out there that, whether they'd admit it in the, in the cold light of day, they believe in ghosts. Well, you notice if you go to a party and you're the first one to bring it up, somebody's always going to have a better story than yours, but they won't bring it up first. <laughs> well, my grandparents had told me ghost stories, and I thought, why would they be telling a child ghost stories to try and scare them or something? I, I, and I, my grandparents were very salt of the earth. It wasn't like they were going to make something up just for, to, for story's sake. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe them. Well, well, you know what? This is a way of life in Europe, all right? And there's not too many of us living in this area that are real far removed, generational-wise, from, you know, relatives coming over. And this is normal in Europe. It, it's Americans that think it's crazy. Well, well, there you go. Heath, you're on the air. Yeah. Say hi to Marianne. Oh, well, hello, Marianne. I just had a... Uh comment and a question uh we were living in a house my wife and i got married had our son we were living in a house uh that was built 
it's old. It was probably built in the, uh, you know, early 1900s. Uh, after my son was born, he would sit in the living room and look up the stairs, and then he would, it was almost like he would watch something come down the stairs, go into the living room, and he would cry. Aww. And at the same time, um, we would hear, like, we had three light bulbs burst in the living or in the hallway outside our bedroom one night. Mm-hmm. Yet, I mean, it was the sound of a light bulb popping. Mm-hmm. And um, we'd wake up, I'd go out and I'd check all the light bulbs, and they all worked. And also, he has a lot of the toys that make a lot of noise, you know, and they play songs and stuff. Right. And uh, they would go off on their own. And some of them, when, you know, they wouldn't work because we figured the batteries were dead, yet they would go off. They would still work, yes. That's very common. They, and, and they do it to scare you because when you get upset or it scares you, you put out more energy, which is exactly what they're using. But there's a good example of children being very, very, very visual. They can see things like that very easily. Was, was he sick a lot with a lot of ear, nose, throat, and upper respiratory problems? No, not at all. Boy, you were lucky. Um, we've moved since, and we're in our house now, and we're starting the same type of things are happening with his toys. Uh, he hasn't he hasn't done the you know following something looking but you know in the house it's a newer house now but um, uh, he's now does he like up. the bedroom his bedroom in this house? Um, he doesn't sleep there very often. He's but mostly in bed with you guys. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, and he has been since he was since he was young. It's he doesn't like the other room so much. I mean, he'll go in if we're in there, but he doesn't go in a whole lot on his own. How old is this house now that you're in? Um, it's not very old, I don't think. I would say it was probably built in the 40s. No, it's old enough to have a ghost or, or something. Well, a brand new house can have a ghost. Is it his bedroom that has the the crawl space out of it? Uh, it's his bedroom, yeah. Yeah. There's a real good reason why he doesn't like his bedroom, let me tell you. <laughs> You've got, you do have a spirit in this house also. Okay. <laughs> so he's right now, it's a male, and he's upstairs by the linen closet. The, okay. um, are those actually built-in drawers in the wall? Yeah, there are. Yes, that's okay. Yeah, that's where he's standing, where the drawers are actually built in the wall. Yeah, and our other house didn't have that, but uh-huh. we have it here. Yeah, that's right where... Right outside our bedroom door. That's where he's at right now. But he likes to hang out in that, the child's bedroom that he has the crawl space. Okay. 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 All right. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, is it... Is it's an it, older man, probably about 65 years old. Um, let me see. The way he's dressed, I'd say he probably died in the 1950s. Um, clean shaven. Uh, a good set of, good amount of hair for his age. Uh, it is definitely gray. There's no, it's, it's he's solid gray. Um, that's basically all I can tell you. I cannot talk to them over the telephone. Right. How about, a, how about a phone number? Because we're getting real close to the news here. How about a phone number that if someone wants to reach you? We'll 4, give... 440-230-2970. Uh-huh. There you go. We'll give that out throughout the program so if folks want a few. That, that's the best advice I can give you there, Heath, is if you want to try and get a hold of Marianne, do it, do it on your own time and have her come over and get rid of the spirit. And can you find out when you go there, uh, I guess we only got about 30 seconds here before the news, but can you find out when, when you go to someone's house why the person stayed? Absolutely. Find out who they are, why they stayed, why that house, where he's buried, um, where he worked. You can ask him anything you want about the only thing he won't know is the lottery numbers. And if we could just get a spirit to do that, none of, oh boy. None of, none of us would have to work. <laughs> You've got that right. Joined this evening by Marianne, the paranormal investigator. More of your phone calls after coverage of What in the World's Happening. If you'd like to email me, gilly at wtam.com. Oh, that coverage, it begins right now. Obviously designed by Kim. Joined on the line by Marianne, the paranormal investigator, who can tell you just by being on the phone whether or not your house is haunted. And uh, actually, you could come out and, and you've relieved most everybody of their ghosts, except for last time you told me there was one you couldn't get rid of? Right. I can't. I, what I do when I go to the house, I like to be able to make that white light that they lost after their funeral. And I like to watch them walk into that so they 
are where they need to be. And you say most folks show up at their own funerals or everybody oh, they does? they always attend their funeral. The, the only exception are babies. There would be no reason for them to be at a funeral. But when you walk into a funeral home to see somebody laid out, there's the casket in front of you. You kneel down to say your prayer. The dead person's head is to your left. Feet are to the right. And they're always laid out in that same direction. At the foot of the casket is always the spirit of whoever is in the casket. Uh, at the foot, not the head. At the foot, correct. Oh, so they can look at themselves. You bet. Check out what their hair looks like, the clothes they have on. They check out their flowers, who sent them, who didn't. Some of them will count even how many cars are in the funeral procession to the cemetery. Um, and, and you said generally ghosts don't hang out in cemeteries because there's no energy for them to draw off of. Right. Everybody's dead. And he said an occasional old woman might be complaining about how no one picks the weeds off her grave or right. something like that. Right, like, and, and she just swoops through every now and again to see what, the, you know, see what her headstone looks like. But she's not going to stay there because there's no energy. I meant to ask you, because someone, uh, and I was out in the complex, they said, why don't you ask Marianne if there's any ghosts in our new building? Which is not a, not a new building, but that's our new building. There are no ghosts, per se, that stay in there, not in this building all the time. However, whoever drives the little red sports car has one attached it to him. Okay. Well, I don't know. There's so many people that work here. Right. There's a, it's a, and I think he bought this, and I think it's a man that drives it, and I think he bought it used. Okay. But there is a spirit that, that will come back and forth with that person. Oh, I'll keep my eye out for who drives the little red sports car. Right. If they can't get through on the line tonight, they can call your voicemail at 440-230-2970, and you'll get back to them as, as quickly as you can. Sometimes it takes a while. You're busy, right? Right now, I am actually making callbacks to people that called me in October. And you had quite a rush after, uh, after September 11th? Yeah, after 9-11, I got about 2,000 phone calls from people in New York. So I've just been a little swamped. But yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. Just have patience. I will call you back. All right. Marty in Strongsville, you're on the air. Hi, how's it going? All right. Say hi to Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Marty. What can I do for you? Oh, I don't know. I'm just in an uh, old apartment building. And uh, I know that there's been many of people who lived here before. And I get a weird feeling here sometimes. I was just wondering what you thought. How old is the house? It's an apartment. Oh, it's, uh, okay. Well, let me just start with apartments, condos, anything that has a lot of families living under a common roof. All right? All right. Um, say you live on the second floor. And there's a floor above you, floor beneath you that has renters in it. Say there's a ghost that is mostly upstairs. Well, if there's nothing going on that day, but there's a party going on at your place, they'll come down to your house. It's real easy. It's almost like a smorgasbord for ghosts if they live in those kind of places because they can go from apartment to apartment to apartment. Right now, you don't have anybody in your apartment, but there has been somebody there. That they were there Friday. Friday? Friday. I don't know what was going on in the apartment on Friday, but there was definitely a spirit of a woman there on Friday. Uh, but that was the last time she was there. Now, because she's not there, I really can't tell you anything about her except that I know for sure it was a woman. And I don't think she's on top of you. I think she's mostly in the apartment. You only have one common wall with somebody? Uh, yeah. That's the, the side that you have the common wall with. Okay. There is that. She the, just died not too long ago. Oh, uh, well, it might be her then. <laughs> Could be her. There you go. Hope that helps you out there. And uh, folks can hang around literally forever, huh? Oh, sure. I've run across people that the oldest one that I've ever run across was had been dead for 400 years. Hey. That's the oldest one. Uh, and Strongsville's very unique. I, the, the ones that I run across in Strongsville have been dead, a lot of them that didn't cross over from the turn of the century. And I have to obviously clarify that now. The last century, not this century. Right. I, uh, I, lived, I, I lived in a house in Strongsville that was haunted. A lot of them are, and it got really way worse after they start building the new mall out there. Oh, because you're displacing their uh, their homes. I don't know what happened. I don't know why it, they just they just went in a total uproar about that. They got it got really really active out there. Lakewood always had the lead the lead on who has the most ghosts. 
uh, Lakewood's full. They're, they're probably is 5% of houses in Lakewood that don't have something. All right. But Strongsville, since they started, after, as soon as they started that mall, uh, Strongsville got very popular. Yeah, I lived in a house that is now the Walmart parking lot. Oh, cool. But okay. uh, I, w- I was in that house, and I, I wore glasses, and I had my glasses off, and I was washing my face or shaving or something. And I, I mean, I just knew that there was some guy staring at me. Mm-hmm. I, I just knew it. Mm-hmm. And I put my glasses on, and I looked, and there was no one there. Mm-hmm. And we had strange things happen in that house. My girlfriend would cut her finger, and by the next day, it would heal. Oh, that, well, that's not that bad. That's a good thing to happen. I mean, if it can heal that fast. Well, one night we were lying in bed, and I was not asleep. And I was trying to fall asleep. It was about 3 in the morning, and she sat bolt upright, turned, opened her eyes, looked at me, screamed, turned back, closed her eyes, and laid back down. Had no <laughs> recollection of it whatsoever, <laughs> and I thought, now nah, that's just a little odd, isn't it? Yeah. Can, they, can they manifest that? Through someone else while they're sleeping? Uh, no. <laughs> no. So, so that was probably something she ate. Uh, probably pizza before she went to bed that night. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jennifer, you're on the big one. Hi. Uh, I, uh, I live in Lakewood, so I guess I don't have to oh, ask whether or not I have a ghost. Oh, gosh, you're right. How long have I, you lived here? Um, not long. Just since uh, um, August. Double? I'm sorry? Are you in a double? Uh, actually, I'm in an apartment, but there's only two floors. I live in the top floor. Okay, so you're in an apartment also. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you def- Oh, you have really a creepy laundry room in that place, don't you? Yes. <laughs> oh, laundry room's really bad. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I would probably actually take my clothes someplace else and do them. I wouldn't go in that laundry room. Okay. That, that's, there's a very negative energy in that laundry room. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Died violently, male. In fact, the um, the lights go off in the laundry room all the time. They're always going out. Oh, sure. He would just love to sc- scare the hibijis out of everybody in that place. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. In, my, in my apartment, though, I don't necessarily feel, like, negative. I feel, um, like, a lot of spirits, but not necessarily a whole lot of bad. Um. You don't have, I mean, there's nothing that's in your apartment that's earthbound there on a permanent basis. Okay. You're okay as far as that goes. Okay. So, what kind of work do you do? Not where, just what type? Uh, I'm a writer. Oh, okay. So you spend a lot of time in the house then? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, like I said, my advice to you is avoid the laundry room. Okay. All right? You're not a a ghost writer, are you, Jennifer? (laughs) I just had to check. All right, thanks. Yeah. In fact, I was uh, uh, speaking of uh, ghosts. I was just downstairs earlier in the break, and it's snowing to beat the band, and it's already accumulating, and it felt like a scene from The Shining because the wind was whistling and the snow was blowing. Same and... out here. Before I came, got on the radio with you, I looked outside, and it's snowing quite a bit. We're out in North Royalton, also. Vince, west of the Cuyahoga, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. Say hi to Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Hi. Um. I got a question. It's not really a ghost, a ghost problem. Okay. Um, but my my father passed away last week. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. And I was just wondering if you could tell, like, if he's around or if he's, you know, like. I'll tell you what I'm picking up. Uh-huh. He was really, really tired. It was time for him to go. Yes. Um, Definitely. And everybody around, I mean, this wasn't anything quick. Everybody around knew he was going. He knew he was going. He was very anxious to see somebody. His right. father or brother? Pardon me? Was he anxious to see his father or his brother that had died before him? Probably his father because his father died like uh, 45 years ago. Okay. No, he crossed over. He crossed over right after the... Um, the, the last service, he didn't, you know, he was there for his funeral and, and whatever. You had the memorial service and everything. But he, he pretty much left right after that. He didn't hang out. Okay. I think he was pretty confident that everything was in order and everything was okay. Okay. Okay? I would think that any time from six months on, uh, you'll be having a dream of him. If you dream of somebody that has died, Uh that's a very good indication that they've crossed over. People that are earthbound, it is very, very hard for them to get into a dream. Okay. 
So, but it, it doesn't always happen right away. Sometimes it can, actually, I know one where it took up to two years before they finally had a dream of somebody. Wow. But it can, it, it's usually after about six weeks sometimes you, you should have a dream about them. Okay. Okay? Great. Yep, up that helps you out there. Gina, you're on the air. Hi, Marianne. How you doing? Good. Yes, um, we moved in my father-in-law's house in September, and he passed away in December. Mm -hmm. And my husband was sitting in the kitchen a couple nights ago at about 3.30 in the morning, and he felt something go by him and sit in a chair okay. next across from him. And now I'm wondering, could that be him? Uh, I mean, the things on the Why did he had a little unfinished business, didn't he? Yes. Uh-huh. And things on a wall are moving back and forth. We'll yeah. He, now, he moving. did not cross over. Uh-huh. In all him? honesty, were you supposed to be in that house? Well, yes. He asked us to move in with him to help him out. Were you supposed to stay in that house then? Yes. Okay. Is there another family member that's a little upset about this? No, uh-uh. Oh, okay. Well, there's some unfinished business there somewhere. Uh -huh. And that's the reason he didn't cross over. Okay. But it is, yeah, it's probably him. He's harm us, is he? Pardon? He's not going to harm us or, you know, hurt us. Oh, no. They can't, I mean, no. Why would your father or father-in-law hurt you? Of course not. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but he's still an energy drain on everybody in the house. Oh, okay. I mean, that, he can't help that. It's because of him being earthbound that just goes with the territory. Oh, okay. So, but you definitely, you know, I, you also, in case you're interested, you also have a woman in the house, too. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, she's, she's a little bit of an instigator. She moves things around a lot on you. She'll move bills or money or keys or jewelry. That, that has happened to us. Yeah, she's, and she's been there for quite a while. Oh, my. Yeah, she's probably, been, she was probably there before you ever moved in. She's standing on the landing going downstairs to the basement. <laughs> That's why I'm so scared to go in the basement. <laughs> okay. I get the chills when I go down that basement. How come you, what, uh, uh, there's a door that goes out there too, right? Pardon me? I'm sorry, what? There's a door that goes outside there too, right? Yes, there is. Wh how, what kind of thing is that? Is that a shelf or just a ledge that has all that stuff piled on it? Just a, just a floor, sitting on the floor. Oh, okay, okay, all right. All right. Did you have water? Did you just have a backup of water in the basement too lately? My father-in-law did. I think maybe a year or two ago. All right. She was definitely there for that. So she's been there for a while. What do I do to get her out of here? Uh, <laughs> probably give me a call. Yeah, call Marianne at 440-230-2970. Okay. Okie doke. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, don't people get freaked out when you tell them stuff about their house? I don't know why they call if they don't want to know they shouldn't call. <laughs> there you go. Your triple Doppler forecast from TV3 meteorologist Eileen McShea. Tonight, well, it said rain changing to snow. That's already happened. It's snowy out there. It's windy, low in the low 20s, currently 33 degrees. Tomorrow, some snow in the morning, then it should clear out in the afternoon with a high near 30. Let's look ahead farther, shall we? Sure. Monday night, cloudy and low 20s. I want to remind you that love is in the air. Wills and Coleman have Godiva chocolates and red roses from Plantrex Flowers for you to win all next week. And Mike Trevisano is broadcasting live from Maggie's Candies out there on Brook Park Road on Thursday. That's Valentine's Day. That's adorable, isn't it? The big one has a heart. News Radio, WTAM 1100. I talked with a gentleman once who was telling me a story, Marianne, about how he knew that his uncle was in the bedroom that he stayed in at a house. And he was, I think, the oldest kid. And he moved away. And his younger brother came to him years later and said, I hate to sound like a nut, but I'm sure that our uncle was in my bedroom one night. And he oh. says he had never mentioned anything to his brother about it. Another brother, a younger brother, stayed in that same bedroom. And years later, having never talked to the other two about it, said to the first oldest brother, I swear our uncle was in my bedroom one night sitting on the bed. Mm. Three brothers that never had a discussion with each other about something like this, and they all felt the same presence. Can normal folks uh, tell who it is, or do they just generally... Because I could never tell. You told me that I had an old man in my basement. Mm -hmm. I just felt you know, the presence of something with the dog running around and not wanting to go down there. And mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Are there some people that are just more in touch? Yeah, uh, yes, there are. And if it was any time around a new moon 
or a full moon, the earthbound spirits have more energy. I, I really don't know why, but from certain phases of the moon, they get more energy. And on those times, they can really show themselves very well. Um, they... And, and there could have been those times, you know, or that at a certain time of the month where when the brothers were in there sleeping at those various times that they had the energy to do it. Um, and, it and it is. It's, it, it's, it's a little creepy. That's why I think it's interesting that these ones that cross over that come in dreams, now they actually have the ability to materialize in front of you. But dreams are acceptable. You go to bed tonight and you dream of your grandmother. You're going to get up tomorrow morning and you're going to call your sister and you're going to go, geez, I had the best dream of grandma last night. But you go to bed tonight and you get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to go to the bathroom and grandma's sitting on the foot of your bed. You're going to freak out. Uh, yeah, That's I'm... not acceptable. Right. Yeah. That's why they come in dreams. Oh, I got you. So, but yeah, that could have definitely been the uncle. And now whether he was earthbound or whether he had crossed over, that I have no way of knowing. Right. Well, obviously, yeah, right. you don't have him on the line. Right. Rich in Seven Hills, what's your question for Marianne, the paranormal investigator? Up to, uh, the Gilly? Yes. Hey, Gilly. Hi, Marianne. How you doing? Hi, good. I, uh, uh, I have a situation. Uh, my father built a house in 52. I uh, almost doubled the size of it in 93. And uh, uh, I have had uh, kind of long hallway uh, folks walking up and down the hallway when, the, when there's nobody here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had uh, uh, my grandbaby, uh, when, he was, when he was tiny, I'd be holding him. He'd stare off in the darkness, freeze up and, and uh, shake and, and cry. Mm -hmm. um, my uh, my wife has heard things. Uh, my my kids have been literally, as they explained to me, and I say, yeah, okay, pinned in bed. Um, I'd, I'd like to know if uh, if you if you have a sense of uh, of what's going on in this place. You know, I mean, I who's the antique collector in the house? My mother. Is she still in the house too? Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I bought the house from her when my father died in '87. So she's also living in the house. Yes, she is. Uh huh. Okay. Well, number one, that tells me that your father probably did not cross over. All right. Okay. Where's the Where's the old train set? There's an old train set, like a Lionel train. We uh, we had American Flyer, but my brother. America, had that. Okay. Where is that? It's. Uh, is it still in the house? Not to my knowledge. Are you sure? No, you're not sure. Okay. No, I'm not. Uh, there could very well be train up in the uh, in the old in, attic. In the attic, you got it. It's up there with the bo uh, with a bunch of other stuff. There's still some other toys up there too. Yeah. There's an old um, Christmas tree up there too. As a matter of fact, an artificial Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah, aluminum. Yeah. Yeah, aluminum with the lights. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's where the train. Uh, I don't. There's a man in the house, which is probably your father. There's an older woman in the house that has that's attached to. It's like a small writing table. Okay. That's that was hers apparently when she was alive. I don't know how or where your mother got it from, and. <laughs> All right. That, do you I know, know where that table you is? Of, yes. Okay, and there is also a child in that house, about 12 years old, that likes, has something to do with that train. Now, it probably was never his, but he has ended up in that house and likes that train. You hear that child running up and down the hallway. That's what you're hearing. Okay. All right, so that's what you've got going on in your place. Could I uh, uh, could I mention to you uh, when the uh, when the addition that I put on the house was under construction, uh, I heard uh, some uh, uh, I will say guttural uh, language that is to say very deep voice uh, language that I did not hear or what have you. Uh, grabbed a weapon looking for something to shoot nothing there. Uh -huh. uh, ran through a cold spot and I, and I'm thinking to myself, oh boy. Now I just got to chill up my spine. <laughs> I mean I'm I'm, I'm I'm being dead serious with you. I. Uh, uh, the, the people I work with, I've told them these, these same things. I, um, I'm really kind of concerned. Well, the boy's in the attic, and it's very difficult to get to that attic now, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. He, that's where he is. And he only comes out when everybody in the house is quiet. All right? 
and he could actually be setting off and playing with your any of the toys that your grandchildren have in the house too in the middle of the night. The other the woman is actually standing by that writing table. Is that in the hallway now? Uh yes, as a matter of fact it is. Yeah, okay. That's where she's standing. And the old man He's over, I'm, well, I'm assuming that's a family room now. He's standing over there by the recliner that he has the afghan thrown over the back of it. Okay. Oh, my. All right, there you go. Thanks, Gilly. Yeah, you're more than welcome. If you uh, want to get a hold of Marianne to try and get those spirits out of your home, 440-230-2970. Yeah, that, that creeped me out. He was talking about the guttural voices. and, and mm -hmm. What's up with that? Maybe they didn't like the fact that he was building onto the house? Yeah, he probably thought the house was just fine the way it was. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. Well, that opened up my line. What we'll do is we'll hear some important words, then coverage of what in the world's happening, and then more of your phone calls with Mary Ann, the paranormal investigator here on Cleveland's only news radio station, WTAM 1100. Well, Marianne, I got an email at gilly at WTAM.com. Hi, Rick. Wondering why do ghosts need energy they draw from the people they haunt? Do they need it to continue to haunt? This is one aspect of the investigator's claims that I don't understand. Okay. They do not have a human body anymore like we do. But they still need human energy to keep going. It's like, gee, there's a plug. Stick your finger in the plug if you need energy. That's unfortunately not the kind of energy they need so in a way yes the email the question that they're asking is yes they really do need our energy to keep going okay now they can't obviously die because they're already dead but if they don't get the energy they get very lethargic and they just sort of stay in the corner and don't do anything and they really don't like that so they're almost like a, a the true version of vampires they have okay, to, I mean, yeah, they need, they need energy, though, instead of blood, right. Right, they have to suck off some energy from someone living. Right. Or they're not going to be able to continue. Yes, or but, not, a, never. but a vampire would die where the, the, the ghost is already dead. So. Now, I know a lot of people right. have a hard time getting hold of you at 440-230-2970. Uh, is there something they can do in the meanwhile? Say you can't get back to them for a, a month. I mean, say you're very backed up. Okay. Some, something they can do in their house to try and cut down on the activity level? Sure. What they can do, number one, is if, if you're affiliated with a church, definitely have a priest or a minister come in and bless the house. That is always a good thing to do. Uh, the one thing you do not want to do, however, is do not get your hands on holy water and start throwing holy water around yourself because that will just put them right on their ear. So do not do that. The other thing that you can do is get what is called a smudge stick, S-M-U-D-G-E. And that is actually what Native American Indians use to get rid of unwanted spirits. And what that does, you follow the instructions on the back of the smudge stick. It's usually made out of sweet grass or sage, something like that. And it works sort of like an incense stick where you light it and then you blow the flame out and you go through all the rooms with the um, smoke from it. Now, uh, just follow the instructions. And what that will do is make them very lethargic and and it does, it drains their energy so they just sort of don't pull any energy off of anybody, you know, that's in the house. And there are people that actually rather do that every 10 days or two weeks. They do it regularly, and they said that's fine. They, they don't really want the spirit to go, but they don't want it to do anything either. So they just smudge every couple of weeks, and, um, you know, they don't bother to have me out, which is, just fine. All right. Diane and Munson, you're on the air. Are you there? Hello. Howdy. Say hi to Marianne. Oh, it's me? Yes, it's you. <laughs> are, Marianne. You Di are you Diane and Munson? Yes, I Th am. Then it's you. Marianne? Yes, hi. Hi. Um, I have, I believe, a very unique house. Okay. This was, I don't know, it goes back to the 1800s. Okay. It used to be a schoolhouse. All right. And only my six-year-old sees 
little. She says, she calls them little people. All right. Um, it's not, it's not scary by any means. I mean, everybody wants to come to the house. Okay. Um, can you tell me Well, anything? okay, now, I know this is a, a, a radio show tonight about actually ghosts, but just to answer your question, there truly are little folk, okay? Right. There are oh, fairies, leprechauns, wood sprites, um, there's a, an assortment of things like that. I, I have to tell you, anything, and, and people are going to chalk this up to for, a folklore, okay? Right. But I think there's some truth to all of those things all right. over um, the years. You know, I live across the street from... You live across the street from what? A cemetery. People don't hang out in cemeteries. Well, okay. All right. I mean, well, cemeteries, I want... believe me, cemeteries are your best neighbors. Okay. They're quiet, well, that's what no I problem. Thought. Right. No, but what you're, what, and, and, you know, kids like to play with sprites and fairies and those kinds of things. So that's, you know, there's probably no problem at all. The house actually feels pretty good for being this old of a house. You're, you're really lucky because you brought the, a lot of the, the, the rooms back to the, back to the original, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't care for that that's one part of your basement that still has the dirt floor. Um, our basement, we're trying to, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not real nutsy about that part of the basement. But right. um, but all in all, in general, the house is fairly, you know, you, you, I wouldn't say you have anything really major to worry about. Okay. Well, why is my six-year-old only the one that sees? Because... I could ask you, how come I have three younger sisters and a mother and they can't see ghosts? Some people can, some people can't. But I see them too, sometimes. Okay, but not all the time. Apparently your child sees them more on a regular basis. Yeah, and yeah. she's not afraid. There's, I've never was afraid either. I still never have been afraid. Why, why would you be afraid? It's normal. It is very normal for me to see them all the time. Apparently it's normal for your child too. There you go, Diane. Hope that helps you out. Uh, I have a question. Sure. My wife claims that when she watches TV, mm -hmm. that a little girl watches TV with her. Now, my wife's never been home when I've been on the phone with you, mm -hmm. but you said you never felt the presence of a little girl. Can they just come and go? Oh, sure. And where would they go? Out anywhere? The house across the street, the house next door. Uh, during the day, uh, a child spirit may just go to a school and hang out in the school with a bunch of other kids. Oh, I see. Oh, sure. You know, they can go anywhere they want. Basically, who's going to tell them they can't? So then how can you pin this down? If you go to someone's home, what if they feel a presence and then you get there and say, well, I, I don't, they're not here. Okay. If I were to ever talk to you, and let's use your wife as an example. Okay. If I was to talk to you from your house and your wife was there, and there, all of a sudden now there is a little girl in the picture, all right? Okay. If I was coming out to your house to take care of it, your wife would have to be there. Otherwise, the little girl might be who knows where. With your wife, correct. Okay. Now, I have actually gone to houses. It hasn't happened any time recently. It probably happened 20 or 25 years ago where I, I would come up to houses or... Because I lived in Worcester at the time, so I'd drive up from Worcester and, you know, do work up here and drive all the way up here and go to somebody's house and I could feel that somebody had been there, but they weren't there when I got there. You know, that, but that doesn't happen too often anymore. I think that um, a lot of times, as long as you're talking, like if you were talking to your wife and you're going, well, gee, Mary Ann's coming tomorrow, we're going to get rid of the man down the basement. If you're talking out loud, he's hearing it. And some of them get this attitude like, Oh, yeah, right. I'm going to be here because I think whoever this lady is is hosing these people. They can't talk to me. Well, but then when I get there, they find out that I can talk to them. See, I got a strange feeling when I was speaking with you from my home and you, we were describing. And you described the basement in detail that uh, was sufficient enough to me that was not vague. Mm -hmm. And w as I was speaking with you on the phone about having you come over sometime to get rid of the man in the basement, I just, I don't know how to describe it other than I felt... This presence of uh, anger 
Does that make any sense? Well, yes, and that's exactly right. He could be very angry that because... How dare I try to get rid of him from his house? That's exactly right. That you have, you nailed it right on the head. Because I don't think uh, you've ever described this guy as ever going away. Whereas no. I, I had a couple other ones that you said may have may have moved on to someplace else. Right. I'll tell you, there was a, a murder um, at a local fast food restaurant oh, about let me think, maybe five years ago now. And the girl that was killed was like 19 years old. And I had previously done work for her mother. So as soon as this gal got killed, her mother called me and she says, oh, you've got to come over. She said she died violently. I'm sure she isn't going to cross over, you know, the whole 90 yards. And the gal knew me. I had met her when she was alive. And uh, the mom would say, um, and we'll just say her name was Mary for whatever purpose and she'll go mary make sure you're here you know be here don't go anywhere mary ann's coming tomorrow well i'd walk in the back door and, and mary'd walk out the front door she did not want to cross over she did not want to be in my presence she was really ticked off at the lady that killed her and she had every intention of doing nothing but giving her grief. On top of that, within two weeks after she was killed, her girlfriend, her best girlfriend, and her boyfriend started seeing each other, which really ticked her off because she wouldn't have expected that from either one of them. So she was just an angry little girl, and she was not going anywhere. So, did yeah. You, did you eventually get her to, to cross? No, actually, I did not. I never could corner her. Oh, that's the one that you were telling me about? There you go. Right. That's the one. Yeah. Never could corner her. Uh-uh. Wow. No, and I don't know where she is at this point in time. The mom has since moved uh, out of state, and maybe she's with her. Maybe she's still giving grief to the woman in prison that killed her. I don't know, because the woman ended up going to prison. Um, wow. I don't know where she's at. Your triple Doppler forecast from TV3 meteorologist Eileen McShay. Tonight, snow, windy, cold, 31 right now. It's going to get down to the low 20s, perhaps an inch or two of snow. Tomorrow, more snow. Keep it tuned to Wills and Coleman in the morning. They'll give you your Sky Chief helicopter traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the 10s. Your information epicenter, Wills and Coleman on News Radio WTAM 1100 from 5 until 9 in the AM. Wildcard line, you're on the air. Hi, this is Jackie Martin. I was wondering if my house is haunted. Okay. How old is your house, Jackie? I think it was built in 1915. 1915? Wow. Where, where are you calling from, Jackie? Akron. Okay. Okay. Um, do you rent this house? No, I bought this house in 1994. I'm the second owner. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Um, now, see, you've got something odd here. Do you work in a nursing home or in a hospital? I work with very handicapped people. Ah, uh, okay. That's what it is, then. You are bringing people back and, and forth from work with you. Sometimes. Uh, um, well, I think Marianne means dead people. <laughs> dead, yeah. Spirits of people, not live ones. Oh! <laughs> oh! Yeah, unfortunately, you're in a line of work that has a tendency that that happens to. People that work, that are caregivers, like in nursing homes, hospitals, uh, that type of thing. Uh -huh. And so I think what you're doing is, on occasion, probably at least three times a week, whoever decides to come home with you for the night. Uh, do you have animals? No. Okay. Um, well, actually, you do. You have a spirit of a cocker spaniel in your house. Huh. See, I don't know. The, the people that own the house before me, I don't know what... I don't really know that much about them. Okay. And so I don't know if they had animals or whatever. Okay. But, um... Well, this is a, definitely a cocker spaniel. But, um... Uh, but definitely, you're, you're just bringing little, you know, you're just bringing some people home back and forth with you to work, from and to and from work. Oh, so there isn't necessarily anybody... No, any nobody here anybody. that's permanently or a permanent resident, no, except for the cocker. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're really not in too bad a shape. Oh, great. Okay? All okay. right. Hope that helps you out there, Jackie. 
Yeah, I'd heard from someone that uh, you can you can move spirits around in antiques, probably from you. But are they more prone to? Somebody had mentioned something about picture frames and mirrors. Yeah, it's probably me. Um, they like mirrors, and I'll tell you what else they're really attracted to. Um, Women really like their, their their bedroom suits, their bedroom sets. And, you know, when a house gets broken up or an older person dies and, and the family gets rid of the uh, furniture, a lot of times it gets sold to, you know, use used furniture store or something like that. Sure. And people don't actually buy the complete set. They'll buy maybe the bed frame and then a, somebody else will buy a dresser and somebody else will buy the other dresser. And Oh, they want it all together? Right. So they sort of pick a piece to stay with and th they get pretty ornery about it. Well, I'd say there's a pretty fat chance that they're not going to get to get back together with somebody else that bought it in another house. Yes, but you have to realize these people have the same personalities, the same mentality they had when they were alive. They haven't gotten any smarter just because they died. And if you think about it, if somebody ended up in a nursing home and they ended up with maybe a little uh, Alzheimer or a little uh, hardening of the arteries, you know, that type of thing, they're not always real reasonable. Right. Yep. Yeah, so that yep. just goes with the territory. But bedroom sets, uh, I'll tell you what else. You don't want to go to estate sales and ever buy diamonds because I'd almost guarantee you'll bring something home with with diamonds from an estate sale. Well, that's interesting. Mm hmm Yeah, well, the, so it, it's, it's helpful to know where things come from, apparently. That's right. All right. Uh, Steph in Cleveland, you're on the air. Hello? Howdy. Can Hello? you speak up? Can you speak up, please? Yeah, I can barely hear you. Well, I'm, you're on the air. Thank you. I'm just wondering if I have any ghosts in my house. Okay, what goes on in your house, Steph? Um, nothing too much, really. The light bulbs burn out a lot around here, but other than that, mm. things come up missing a lot. You say things come up missing a lot? Yes. How many people live in the house? Um, it's an apartment building, actually. Oh. See, here we go again with these apartments. Again, I don't think you have anything there on a regular basis, but I bet you just have a couple in the building that are real snoops that come through all, everybody's place and just jewelry missing or one earring. Yeah, that happens a lot. Uh-huh. Um, probably keys and paperwork, too, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, somebody's just coming through and being snoopy. You don't have anybody there that's like your ghost. Okay. But you're sharing a ghost with the apartment building. So where are the keys? <laughs> Got me. <laughs> <laughs> don't they, have a clue. They okay. could be anywhere. That's right. All right, Steph, thanks. I had a question for you, Marianne. This seems, this seems kind of left field, but... I guess to some folks, maybe the whole topic seems left field. It doesn't to me. Yeah. I had two bottles of alcohol in my medicine chest. Okay. And I used, there was one that was brand new and never opened, and another one that was almost empty. Okay. I used, I don't remember exactly what I was doing, but I was cleaning something with it, and the way my house is set up, it's a double, and nobody lives in half of it. Mm -hmm. So the other half's more or less storage. Mm -hmm. Now, I couldn't find that. I looked everywhere, and I, I know where I set the bottle down, somewhere in my part of the house. I, I mean, I, I know I set it down in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. I looked everywhere for that, and my wife said to me, where'd that bottle, did you ever find that bottle of alcohol? And I said, no. I found that bottle of alcohol locked in a box in the front part of the house that's, st that's storage. How did it get, I know I did not put it there. And I know it's, there, was, there were only two bottles of alcohol in that whole house, and I know that's where it ended up. And I know I didn't put it there. Believe me, they can do things like that. The, I, the, the house I did yesterday, the woman said to me, I had picture frames. She said, and I, I had them leaning against the wall in the spare bedroom. She said, I went back in that room an hour later. They were not there. She says she ripped that house apart for two weeks. She went through the trash, everything, things she accidentally, you know, threw them out. Two weeks later, almost to the day she walked back in that bedroom, there they were leaning against the wall. Yeah, so people, they're not nuts. If they it, are not it, crazy. Nope. I, I know. I mean, I know I wouldn't have put a bottle of alcohol in storage in a box in the front part of the house that no one lives in. I just, now I know at, that. Now, look at the amount of energy that you put out trying to figure out where it went. Absolutely. How it ended up there. It drove me nuts. That's right. Guess who was sucking that up? Uh, uh -huh. I don't... The, uh -huh. 
<laughs> the old man down the basement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I guess the flapper went away, huh? You said I had a flapper. Yeah, the... I... Yeah. Of course, it's hard for you to tell now. I'm at work. That's right. All right. If anybody wants to get a hold of Marianne, if they cannot get through this evening, if they want to get a hold of her, call 440-230-2970. Uh, Cher, where are you at? Oakwood? Yes. You're, you're on the air with Marianne, the paranormal investigator. Thank you. Hi, Gilly. Hi, Marianne. Hi. Howdy. How are you? Good. Good. Um, I have a question. I've just had strange things happening to me most all of my life as I think back to childhood. And I was wondering if you could tell me if I have some entity following me around. Actually, I call them the aliens. Aliens. Once something okay. happens and... It seems to be electrical a lot. No, right, electrical. I told you that. You know, my TV goes haywire, my computer. Right. Electrical is things that, that earthbound spirits are very good at. Where's the house that you lived in that had a front porch and a back porch? Um, it was in Jefferson, Ohio. Okay. It had about... Two outbuildings on the property. Uh, one on a little trailer. Okay. Um, how long ago did you live there? I'm um, 95. Okay, well, who, one for sure followed you from there. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Okay. Are these relatives or... I can't tell if they're... Actually, the, one, the woman may be a relative. Hmm. The, that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. The woman may be. The man, I don't think so. There's a man, too. But I think the man was probably there when you moved in. Mm -hmm. Was this house vacant when you moved in? No. Okay. Not for any period of time? No. Huh. Was there a house somewhere else that you lived that had been vacant for about 18 months before you moved in? No. Okay. I don't know why I'm getting that. Mm. Um, but the two that are there, for sure, the one came with you from where, from the place where the porches were at. Mm. But I, like I said, unless I was there, I really couldn't tell you if they're relatives or not. Oh. Where did the um, where did the blue vase come from that has the the ruffly edge? Um, I think I bought that at a garage sale, actually. Okay. And you may have brought something home with it. With it, yeah. I Whoa. think I think that. Well, did you did you have that in Jefferson? Yeah. Okay, I bet you that's when uh, you got this woman. Hmm. When you got that vase. Why are they messing with my electrical stuff? I I have a landlord. I run a room. Every time I sit by his computer. Something goes haywire, and he says it never happens unless I'm sitting there. Because they're right with you when you go the, to, to work it, and if you're standing close to a TV, the TV's yeah. going to go staticky, mm -hmm. the computer isn't going to work, the printer isn't going to work. Yeah. If you had a fax machine, that wouldn't work. If you use a, a cell phone, mm -hmm. that's not going to work all the time. That's just what they do. They interrupt the electric. Wow. Well, there you go, Cher. They give you a hard time. Well, that'll happen. Tell you what. You'll stay tuned for coverage of what in the world's happening and then more of your phone calls from Marianne, the paranormal investigator, and tell you about the ghosts in your house or your life right here on The Big One. Joined by Marianne, the paranormal investigator, and tell you if you've got some ghosts in your house. Marianne, if they want to get a hold of you, that number is 440-230-2970, correct? Correct. All right, let's go right back to the phones. Mario, you're on the air. Yeah, I was just wondering if I got anything roaming around my abode. Huh, okay. Um, how old is your house, Mario? Uh, 1963. So 663, you yeah. said? Okay. Pretty good house. No, you're not too bad. Uh, where did you get the used car from? That. Don's, Don's Brooklyn Chevy Heaven. Oh, well, I didn't need to know that much. Okay. Uh, but it was a used car. Yes, it does. I, uh, an old lady owned it, and uh, a 10-year-old car got 25,000 miles. Yeah, okay. Well, I think you got the old lady, too. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> she, okay. she, she came with the car. She came with the car, yeah. Yeah, that's, I guess it's just another headache. I got yeah. a witch that's sleeping down the hall. Yeah, 
You got a what? A witch. A witch sleeping? You mean your my, wife? My wife, yeah. yeah okay. Well, that one's alive. So uh, she's, uh, actually, she's pretty cool. Okay, yeah. We don't, we don't worry about that one. So the little old lady that owned the car left a six-pack in the glove compartment uh, of energy. Yeah, there she's definitely. Have you had any trouble with that car since you had it? No, not so ever. Run yeah. like a champ. That's good. That's good. Have you had a lot of electrical problems in the house, though? No, not not really, no. Okay, how long have you had the car? Uh, September. Oh, you haven't had it that long yet. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. But, no, you d you definitely got something with your used car there. Oh, very cool. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, well, I hope that helps you out. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You, you, can, you can have an old lady come with the car. Well, yeah, I guess that was, you know, the little old lady drove it only on Sundays, right? Yeah, 25,000 <laughs> miles. Joe, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on? Hey, say hi to Marianne. Hey, Marianne, what's going on? Not a whole lot. What's going on with you? Marianne, you're scaring me. <laughs> I am. Oh, like a dog. Hey, any, any chump suckers creeping around in my house? Oh, boy. Um... Yeah, you actually have two in your place. Do I? Yeah. Now, are you sure you want me to tell you? <laughs> I <laughs> don't think you really want to know, do yeah, you? Yeah, you, you called here, Joe. Well, 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 uh, yeah, I guess. You scared. Well, what, what are you at? You got one in the hallway. Uh-huh. Is this a double? No. This is a single house? Yeah. How many people live in the house? Uh, Six. Okay, all the bedrooms upstairs? Yeah. Okay, that's why I thought it was a double. Um, you know when you walk up your steps to go upstairs, how there's the landing and there's the window right there? Yeah. There's one standing there. Uh-huh. And the other one is in the kitchen, leaning against the kitchen counter. Uh, where are those pop, um, is that where the pop is at in the cans on the sink there? Yeah. That's where the other one's standing. Okay, who are they, and how can I exercise in my, my house? Okay, both of them are men. Uh -huh. I don't know who they are, because, I, again, I can't talk to them on the telephone. Uh-huh. But, um... What they doing here? Oh, they're causing a little bit of problems in that house. There's a lot of fighting going on in this house. A lot of fighting? Picking, nit nitpicking on one another, a lot of disagreements, a lot of arguments. Yeah. Yeah, it goes on all the time. Well, the, the the girls do that a lot. Yeah, yeah. They take it to a new level, let me tell you. Um, but that's what you've got going on. And the more energy, you know, the more that they can cause those squabbles in the house, uh, the more energy they're getting, which is what they're doing. Okay, now let me ask you this. Uh-huh. This is what I want to know. Mm -hmm. Are they scared of me? Hardly. Well, they, they ain't scared of me. Uh-uh. <laughs> Why would they be scared of you? Because I'm very scared of me. I ain't got nothing to worry about, but I'm about to load. I can't even shoot them, I? No, they're already dead. Oh, man. Hey, let me ask you this, man. Mm hmm I was, uh, once upon a time, I used to buy buy some books. Uh, uh, I had a book about black magic spells and stuff. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I, the, the, well, I, I had a book, and I was at my sister's uh, hair salon. Okay. As I walked across the street, uh, at Maple Town, it was a. Uh, uh, I walked the across the street to a a, a drugstore, mm -hmm. and I seen a, a black guy about maybe six foot, uh, maybe six three, six four, heavy set, standing outside with like a old suit on, like in the fifties, mm -hmm. and he had a witchcraft book in front of him. All right. I checked him out. You know, I just stared at him. I went to the drugstore. When I came back out, he was still there. He looked at me. I looked at him. I looked at the book, and I just kept on walking. Mm -hmm. When I got across the street, I told my sister, I said, you know, there's a guy across the street that have a, a he has a, a witchcraft book in his hand, and he just stared at me. Mm -hmm. When we looked across the street, this chump sucker was gone. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, I don't think that this is either of the men that are in the house because these men aren't that tall. Oh, right. So at least it's not him. How long have you been here? <laughs> I would say from the way the one is dressed that he probably died in the 60s. Uh, How old is the house? The house, I think it was built like maybe 51, 52. Okay, well, he died probably in the 60s. 
And the only reason I'm guessing that is because the way he's dressed, he's got a big fro and he's got um, <laughs> like a polyester suit on. Okay? I got dolomite in my house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> dolomite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, the other one probably died in the 90s. He's dressed in a pair of jeans and a T-shirt. Neither one of them are that old. I want to look now. The lady I purchased the house from, I believe her husband died, and she was up in age. But I don't know when he passed. But these little young rap rap lists, I don't know who these suckers are. No, they're these these no, these guys are not definitely either one of them are not old men. Absolutely not. Uh uh. Shoot, I'm scared to go out of my room now. <laughs> well you know, you can try having the priest or the minister come in. Uh -huh. Try getting one of those smudge sticks like I talked about. Uh -huh. And, you know, and if all else fails, you can call me up and we see what we can do. But there's no danger, right? No, no, no. All I have done is confirm that you have something in the house. They've been there, you know, they've been there for a while. So nothing's really going to change. All right. Except now you know they're there. Yeah, I'm a little scared now, man. Well, you you wanted to know. Yeah, yeah. I, hey, hey. If 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 my thing is, if she tell you scary uh, answers, then stop asking scary questions. There you go. You All know? right, Joe. Appreciate you checking in. Uh, I've talked to folks who claim they see shadows, Marianne. And that's how some people see them, uh, like a black shadow moving across the wall. Some people see them as, you know if you're ever driving on the street in the summertime and it's really hot, how you see those waves coming off the street? Yeah. Some people claim that's how they see them. They look like waves. Um, other people see them as a mist, you know, like a little funnel swirl. Everybody sees them different. I see them like a regular person. I mean, they look identical. I mean, just like you, only if I would squint, I could see through them because they're not solid. So everybody sees them differently. And some people don't see them at all. You got it. They just sense them. Yeah, that's what I get mostly. Is mm -hmm. uh, I just you get that creepy feeling. Right, and, the hair on the back of your neck goes up. Yeah, and they like that. Sure, they do. Terry, you're on the air. Say hi to Marianne. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, I've got a basic question. Uh, you were just talking about how you see uh, the, the ghost and everything. Mm hmm When, is there a way you can develop that skill, or it's either you have it or you don't, or what? You know, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how you would go about teaching somebody how to see that. I know that, and again, we're not talking about anything other than mostly the ghost tonight, but... Like, I can tell if there's negative energy on somebody, all right? Uh, if somebody has a curse on them, um, negative energy. I was taught how to take that off so I can teach people how to do that part. But I can't teach somebody how to see a ghost. I don't know how. Is there any relationship between, uh, like, a skill level or a experience level by how you can see them? Because... Um you, you said you can see in full colors and stuff. Right. And I know my sister said she can see in like an outline or something. Okay. I have always been able to see them the way I see them. It's not like I, it got better as the older I got. It's always been the same. Okay. So I don't, again, I, I really can't answer your question. I don't really know. Okay. Okay. What do you see in my place? <laughs> um... Your place isn't too bad. Um, you've got one. Who's the name? Which house has the fence between the two yards? Which neighbor? Uh, the one on the left. That's the one that has one in that house that comes over and visits in your house. But it's not he, he, that that one doesn't come over very often. Okay. But other than that, your house is pretty clear. Good. Okay. Yeah, I hope that much. helps you out. Let's sneak in a couple more here. I've already kept you longer than you wanted to stay, because I know it's, we could keep you here until 5 in the morning, and the <laughs> phone lines would be lit all night long. 
I bet they would. I think, like I say, it's, I think it's like free advice from a dentist when somebody's <laughs> at a party and they say, can you look at my tooth? And they say, yes, I can look at your tooth next Wednesday afternoon in my office. <laughs> if someone would like to contact Marianne, I'm getting email from folks that say, could you please have her call me? And I, I think, well, they can call you. They and, really need to call me themselves because I need to listen to the voicemail and pick up off of that if there's something in the house or not. They have to leave a minute message, at least a, men, a minute message on my voicemail. And, uh, and I know I can hear that phone ringing. And if it's ringing and ringing and ringing and they're not getting through, it's because somebody else is leaving a message. They're just going to have to keep trying. But the, they'll eventually get through. Well, let me just get Jake in Strongsville. Seems like he's been waiting for a long time. You're okay. on the air. Hello? Go. Hello? Hi. Um, you've been in my house before, and I've been noticing some weird things, but I'm not sure. And, um, and I've been to your house? Yeah. Okay. Um, Are all your seeds in place? Huh? Are all the seeds over the doors like they're supposed to be? Yeah, they are. Are they popped? I haven't really checked in a while. Okay, well, unless we check that. I'm not really picking up that anything's been there, though. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me anything about my mom's boyfriend's house, because I've seen something there. Well, you'd have to call from there. I would? Yeah, I can't tell you just that way. You would have to call me from that place, right? Oh, right. okay. There okay? It, yeah, there you go, Jake. Yeah, and, and I guess I failed to mention earlier that you had uh, gone to... Um, uh, I don't want to be specific, but you, you went to a gentleman's place of business. Yes. And cleaned it out with, the, with, I don't know how many ghosts were in that place. Let me think. Oh, uh, one, two, three, four, maybe four or five. And you told him information about his grandfather. Right. Now, this guy's, I know this guy, and he's, he's highly skeptical of anything like this. And you gave him information about where his grandfather lived. And mm -hmm. appa apparently I was told by someone who was telling me about it, not him, but they said he, that he just sort of looked at you. And, and you said, well, what, am I wrong? And he said, no, you're right. And you said, well, generally, they know where they used to live. Right. Now, now, this guy had you go down the street to another place that he owns and do that after you did the first one. Right. Yeah, he was a little surprised. I don't think, I think he would have almost agreed if there was one or two in there or maybe like you know somebody recently but uh, the grandfather's room he wasn't expecting that and um and when the grandfather said where he lived you know i just looked at him and i said did he live there or is he wrong and he said well i'd have to look it up but i think that was the address he says are you sure i said well, yeah, I think he, the man probably knows where he lived when he was alive, you know, and uh, so he just, and the lady that took us, took me to where this place was, he knew her and he just looked at her and she says, I didn't know your grandfather. You know, it's not like somebody gave me the information, so. That's true, too. I, I, know, I know this guy, but I, I certainly knew nothing of his family. No, of course not. And, you know, in an acquaintance at a business, why would you? That's right. And uh, so I guess when you pull something like that out, it pretty much proves to them that... Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sealed it. Yeah, yeah, that, that definitely, it was like... Yeah, she, she knows what she's doing. And this you'll find interesting. I just got another email at gilly at WTAM.com from Cher in Oakwood Village that you spoke with. Uh -huh. Apologies to Marianne. The house I now live in was vacant for almost two years. I knew it. <laughs> so there you go. And you pegged it at about 18 months. That's right. Cl uh, close enough for me. Yeah. See, people, and a lot of times they'll say, do you have this and do you have that? And they'll go, uh-uh, don't have that. Never saw it before. And sure enough, they'll think about it and think about it and come up with it. Now, unfortunately, I'm not very good between Lionel and American Flyer locomotives, okay? So that's Lionel is what came to my mind first with the other man. But if they were American Flyers, heck, that works. Yeah, what's the difference? A toy, <laughs> toy, toy train's a toy train. Marianne, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I if, appreciate it. If anybody wants to reach out to try and get a hold of Marianne, now, I remind you, she's, she's extremely busy. So this might take a little while, but it's 440-230-2970. Or if, they are, if it's an absolute emergency, they can try calling, like you said, their priest or their minister, right? Yes, absolutely. Do you think they'd laugh at you if you called your... Do you think my, my minister would laugh at me if I called him and said I was told I have ghosts in my well, house? you know, there's, 
there's a little way around that because I don't really condone lying to anybody, okay? But you you can actually call your priest or your minister and say, you know, I've lived in the house for so long now, and I've really never had it blessed. Could you come out and bless it? You know, you don't really have to say for what reason. <laughs> Except that my minister listens to my radio program. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll try that, that routine anyway and see if he bites. Okay. All right. Thanks, Marianne. Thank you. Good night. Uh, good night. That's Marianne, the paranormal investigator who, like I say, always a pleasure. Help you clean out your house. Get rid of those pesky ghosts that are giving you problems. And some of the callers seemed a little surprised that uh, the one called Joe. Well, you called here. She didn't tell you maybe what you wanted to hear, but uh, you, get, you got a response. All right, your TV3 meteorologist Eileen McShea says your triple Doppler weather looks like this. Tonight, snow showers, windy, cold, inch or two, and it looks like an inch or two outside already, if I'm looking out the studio windows correctly and not getting a glare off of the, off the parking lot. Tomorrow, some snow in the morning. Keep it apprised uh, on Wills, Webster, and Coleman from 5 until 9. They'll let you know what's going on with the Sky Chief helicopter traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the 10s. Then cloudy in the afternoon with a high near 30. Currently, it's 31 degrees. With the wind chill, it feels like 20 degrees. Stop more of your phone calls after these important words on Cleveland's only news radio station, WTIM 1100.